In my last video, I said I was going to go out and get those aspens again. Well, here I am on location, but before we get rolling, please hit that subscribe button, like the video, comment, hit that bell icon notification. It really does help my channel grow. The first thing I did when I got here yesterday was I stopped by this location and immediately set up to shoot. The reason being is because it had just rained, so that tends to bring out all the colors, uh, makes it a little bit more contrasty, makes everything more vibrant. So I went ahead and, and just shot the whole scene. The timing of being at this location couldn't have been any better. I'm really catching the colors at peak, uh, especially with this location here. I wanted a little bit of a transition between the green and the yellow, and I'm getting that again, just like I did last year. So it's really great with the rain that had just fallen, all the colors are popping. There were even some water droplets on some of the leaves. I'm not sure if that's gonna come through. The leaves were still, for the most part, there were a couple little uh, drafts of wind here and there, but uh, it was really calm. Compositionally speaking, what I love about this scene is that you have these two mature aspens that are fairly straight up and down, so I can put them in the center of my vertical composition. And they're flanked by younger saplings that give you all of the colorful fall leaves, uh, which is great so that you have this contrast of color and uh, the rich detail in the bark. I think all the elements just come together really, really nicely. Uh, with these barks having a lot of character to them, it's really nice to see all that texture. And that's what I was missing in that 8x10 shot that I took last year. But the Hasselblad had, there's a lot of detail in here. And if you overexpose this, you just miss out on all that detail. And so hopefully this year by taking uh, an incident media reading instead of a uh, metering the whole scene, if you start metering too deep into the scene, then you're going to get those shadows. And that's going to, uh, of course, when you average out your exposure, increase the whole exposure and you'll miss out on this wonderful detail that's in the bark. Uh, so that's basically my thought process was that I wanted to have a lot of detail in this bark, uh, have the mature growth surrounded by the uh, younger growth trees with some pop of color uh, to make a nice vertical image. So hopefully this year with the conditions being just as good as they were last year, I did a good job metering and I come back with an image that uh, I'm proud of and that can actually make a good print out of getting all that nice rich detail in the bark. After having time to reflect on these film stocks for this scene, I much prefer the Kodak E100 version for better color, luminance, and highlights. However, I've also had time to reconsider this image for printing ridiculously huge, and I've concluded that this image just doesn't have the wow factor for me. Instead, I'm opting to make a relatively smaller print, say 20 by 20 inches, out of the Hasselblad image I took last year. I think the square format fits the scene nicely, and I also like the much wider appearance of the bark, which contrasts the colorful leaves in a pleasing way. This is the reason why I sit on images for so long and don't do anything with them. If I'm going to commit to mounting the image using the acrylic face mounting process, it has to wow me every time or it will be delegated to the meh pile. Thanks for watching.